Okay, Andy, um, let's give you another one that um, the Christians sometimes have the misconception that uh, Islam is not it's is tied to politics, so that um, a lot of things that happen, say in the Middle East or, or that that area, are because uh, people there are Muslims uh, they believe in Islam, and um, talk to us about that. Yeah, you're right um, to ask that, Teresa. That I think the the politics piece can can often confuse. I remember early on, actually, some of my very early conversations with Muslims getting completely thrown because I thought I'd be t- I was talking about Jesus and the gospel, and suddenly I would be, would be in a conversation about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and I couldn't figure out how we got from one to the other. And um, what is going on there is that for many, most Christians, not all, but most many Christians, uh, particularly in the West, but but more more broadly too, we've been taught to kind of separate religion and politics, you know, so <laughs> church and state. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the whole kind of, you know, render unto Caesar idea from 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 when Jesus was you know talking to the Pharisees. And so we're quite used to the idea that, OK, politics belongs over here and Christian and our faith belongs over here. And that, in one sense, that's not a bad thing, because it, you know, I think bad things happen when you collapse faith and politics. Um, however, in Islam, that never happened, that that separation never happened for a whole number of reasons. One of the main ones being that Muhammad, when you look at the founder of Islam, he was both a religious leader and a political leader. So in the first part of his career, the first um, from sort of 610 AD, when he, when, the, when he first began claiming that, you know, he was receiving angelic revelations, through to 622 uh, AD, AD, where he was there in, uh, in Mecca, in his hometown, really, he pre- his messages looked religious. He preached about monotheism, uh, the need to care for widows and orphans, and he warns people about hellfire if they don't believe him. But then, when he gets thrown out of Mecca and migrates north to Medina, uh, he ends up in political power through a whole sort of series of sort of uh, manoeuvres that I won't bore you with and we haven't got time for in this brief Q&A answer. He ends up getting into political power and suddenly the whole nature of Islam changes. No longer is he just talking about monotheism and justice and hellfire. Now he's claiming to be that God is revealing to him new laws for a new nation with him in charge of it. And, uh, and from that point on, Islam becomes very, very political. Muhammad becomes a war leader. He uh, is involved in about 20 uh, military campaigns. And from that point onwards through Islamic history, Islam and politics, have, or religion and politics have always been combined. And if you read the Quran, you'll find this. You know, you'll read that you'll be flipping through the Quran and you'll find verses that look like they talk about moral things. And then suddenly there's ones that look like they're talking about sort of legal, political things. And so Muslims don't separate those categories. So Muslims will not see politics and religion being separate. And I think all I can say is as Christians, be, be, be aware of that. Don't be surprised uh, by that. But do be very careful how you speak on political issues. I mentioned a moment ago the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You know, as Christians, many of us have strong views on that position, on you know who is right, who is wrong. Many Christians traditionally lean towards being you know, very supportive of Israel. That is not the place to debate. This is not the place to debate geopolitics. Simply do not bring that into conversations with Muslims. For many Muslims, that is the global injustice that that, that trumps all others. And trying to get into an mm. argument with them over, well, hang on a minute, Israel's got a point. But yeah, Israel does very much have a point. Your Muslim friends are not going to appreciate that. Your mm-hmm. best bet is to get off that subject as quickly as you can. You may have to keep getting off it. Um, one way I've often done that is to say, look, you know, we are never going to agree on on politics. We all can recognise that this is a world in which there is evil and and in, and injustice. There has been in the past. There has been today. I don't think we're going to solve that here today. If the Israeli-Palestinian conflict could be solved by two people over a coffee, it would have been solved long ago. Um, yes. You know, why don't we both agree as Muslims and Christians we should pray for peace, we should pray for our leaders, but why don't we talk about what we can talk about? which is, you know, how we deal with that violent tendency in all of us. All of us have that temptation to cause injustice to those around us. Um, How do we address that? Um, You know, as Christians, I believe that can only be addressed by a radical inward transformation of the heart that's offered in Jesus. Um, Because otherwise, as I say, you can, if you go down the political uh, rabbit trail, you can end up in some very strange places and you will not win. However passionate you yeah. are about politics listening to this, yeah. you are not going That's to convince right. Muslims of your view of the Middle East. So right. get it onto Jesus as, as quickly as you can. Yes, and, and find commonalities, right? Yes, find common grounds, exactly. Yeah. And find also, very seriously, find justice issues we can agree on. 
The other thing you can do with Muslims, incidentally, very briefly, is you can find issues that are easier for Christians to agree to agree on um, that will score you points with Muslims. So, for example, mm. I often will talk to Muslims about, say, what's going on with the Uyghurs and the way that those people have been persecuted. Muslims would be quite surprised to hear, as a Christian, that you are concerned about the mistreatment of that, of that, mm -hmm. of that people group. And say, so, yeah, mm -hmm. I deeply am, because as a Christian, I am concerned, whether it's Muslims or mm -hmm. atheists or Buddhists mm -hmm. or whoever, because we as Christians believe they are all made in God's image and right. Jesus died for all of them. And you will surprise your Muslim friends if it turns out that you are willing to speak up about injustice. Sometimes as Christians, mm -hmm. we only appear to be speaking about religious freedom when it's That's Christian right. religious freedom. Let's make sure we That's also right. talk about religious freedom for those we don't agree with. And that will build tremendous bridges for the gospel. That's right. And then uh, another misconception that the Muslims have of Christianity is because uh, in the world of Islam, a lot of the Muslims, they were raised Muslims, right? So it's almost like their identity. So the misconception is they don't understand that with Christianity, it's a personal choice that you make. So that's not necessarily tied to you being raised as a Muslim. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things to say there, Teresa. One is that when you meet somebody who self-identifies as a Muslim, it can be worth asking the question, hey, what do you mean by that? Because there are some people for whom Muslim is almost their tribal, you know, national identity. That's right. They're, that's they're that's Muslims right. because they were born or they, you know, their parents are born in Pakistan. And that's what it means to be a Muslim. It's a kind of badge of identity. And don't criticize that, just useful to know if that's what it means. Mm -hmm. Others you'll find are a Muslim because, you know, it's their deeply held religious conviction. And that's what they mean by Muslims. And others, um, you know, Muslim can be a political identity. You know, in a previous question, we mentioned the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You mm -hmm. know, for some people, Muslim is a badge that connects them to a particular branch of politics. So firstly, find out what they mean by it. Secondly, mm -hmm. I think for, it's important for them to hear for Christians are going, look, you know, as Christians, we believe that ultimately what matters is our relationship between us and, and God. You know, the offer of the gospel, Christians believe in Jesus, is that we, we can be adopted into God's family and be not slaves, but sons and daughters. And that's a decision that you need to, you need, everybody ultimately need to make for themselves. Yeah, it's huge. We, we believe in the importance of family. You know, I always say to Muslims, look, I'm raising my kids to follow Christ, but there will come a point where they will need to decide that, you know, mm -hmm. for them for themselves, they will need to decide whether they're going to continue in the way they've been raised. And obviously I want them to, and I pray for them and, and, and teach them accordingly. And what, you see, the thing is, I often say, look, it's very, the thing is with, just doing what your parents do it's very or your society does it's very easy to pay lip service to it but it actually makes no internal mm -hmm. difference and one of the big things that i've been increasingly struck by in terms of difference between christianity and islam islam is quite concerned with it with with externals as long as on the outside everything looks all right you're following the commandments you're doing what you're mm -hmm. supposed to do um you know no questions really asked jesus didn't leave it there jesus was concerned about the heart and the inward attitude you know, often point out to Muslims, it was interesting that Jesus spent more of his time criticizing the religious people of his day, the Pharisees, mm -hmm. than he did the sinners and the tax collectors and the prostitutes, because they were the people who, you know, like to pretend, look, it's great, you know, I'm keeping every letter of the law. But Jesus was like, hang on a minute, what about your heart? Or the Sermon mm -hmm. on the Mount, you know, where Jesus said, you know, you have heard it said that it was said, do not murder. But I tell you, if anyone even thinks angrily or speaks a curse word about their brother, it's as if they've murdered. You know, if you even look at a woman lustfully, said Jesus, it's as if you have committed adultery. Jesus was deeply concerned with the human heart because I always say to Muslims, that's where all of the problems begin. All of the world's great evils come not from politics, ultimately, but come out of the heart. And that's what needs dealing with. And with all due respect, I say to Muslims, I don't think Islam has the beginnings of an answer to that question but jesus does because what he offers us is not law or instructions but new creation and if anyone is in christ he or she is a new creation the old is gone the new has come that's a unique offer to, to the gospel and that's why we need to be pointing muslims thank you andy thanks very much <laughs>